Hello. Today's stories come from r slash Entitled Parents. We have three stories today of entitled parents who can't share the limelight, nor any accountability. Let's start with story one. My dad threw a fit because everyone was complimenting the cake my nine-year-old daughter baked on her birthday instead of paying attention to him. My daughter had her ninth birthday last week. Since she was very young, she accompanied me in nearly everything I did. As I like to cook and bake, she also had already plenty of experience with helping by making various dishes and cakes. For her last birthday, however, she wanted to go first time all solo, meaning I was to sit and wait in case she had a question, but everything else was her. She was incredibly proud, and so was I, from picking the recipe, measuring, mixing, etc. The only thing I did was pull it out of the oven. She then proceeded to make the frosting and decorate the cake again, all by herself. Needless to say, everybody was very proud of her and she was really looking forward to sharing her cake with the family and chip in with everyone about her process. My mom is a baker also and she heavily complimented my daughter, how wonderful the cake looked and tasted, and soon all of us will be coming to daughter for advice. Daughter was gleaming with joy. Everybody complimented daughter as the cake was indeed delicious and beautiful. That was apparently too much for my dad, who started to get increasingly fuzzy. First off, he started his, maybe you are trying to poison us with this, jokes, and I shushed him. Then when everybody asked daughter about how she did it, he got louder and louder, interrupting her to tell us all that he is also capable of making cake. His cakes will always taste better. It wasn't even a difficult cake, etc. Every time somebody else told him to be quiet, as it was his daughter's moment, So he waited to let the stupid cake talk pass and then started interrupting every conversation that followed just to make it all about him, him, him. When that failed, he got louder and talked with increased volume so he would be heard. He even kind of pounded when she opened her presents as nobody asked what he thought of the presents. So yeah, dear people of Reddit, that is my dad, trapped in the body of a 65-year-old man with the mind of a bratty three-year-old. Edit. I am sorry I cannot reply to everyone individually, but here it is evening, and I am busy getting dinner done, etc. One thing I wanted to point, however, is yes, my dad has been like this all his life. I remember when I was in elementary school, my teachers picked me out for a gifted kids program. My dad had me for weeks on end look through his university notes to show me how much better his understanding of math was in university compared to first grader me. Hence, I am not at all more gifted than he was and is. Sorry for non-native English, by the way. And I have to say sorry. My phone fell into my youngest trusting hands that day, and she decided to help mommy by cleaning it up. In the dishwasher. So we have no pictures that day, and the cake was eaten up instantly. This man has a serious problem if he's constantly competing with children, but that's obvious. I wonder how this materializes at work, with his wife, and other adults. Jeez. Let's check out the comments where OP's dad continues to disappoint with extra details from OP. Achilles said, I am baffled. Your dad should have asked where his presents were. OP replied, he kind of did. My dad had his birthday two weeks prior. As my parents' bathroom is in really bad shape, we kids decided to not get him something, but instead open a savings account for a bathroom remodeling. Now, every birthday and festivity, my parents get a few hundred dollars by each of us. My mom loved that idea and is excitedly waiting until our goal is reached while my dad never fails to mention how he doesn't get real presents anymore, which he also did at my daughter's birthday. Yes, Cheesecake said, classic narcissist. I'm so sorry you all got stuck with him. Holly BK added, OP might have been stuck with him when they were a child, but now they have a choice to allow this man in their and their own kids' lives or not. Perch added, yep, kicked my dad out of my family for less, never regret it. Part of breaking the cycle for me, unfortunately. He knows if he ever decides to get therapy and stick with it, we can talk again. Until then, good riddance. Nick is 84 said, The only thing missing was your dad throwing himself on the floor to have a full tantrum. Next time your dad bakes something, say your nine year old was better. Mama Valkyrie added, I second that notion. Unfair implement said, Then, he on the cake to assert dominance. Okay. Story two I've been holding on to for a couple months because I thought it was too good to not include when the opportunity came up. And a new update means that day is today. The story is called Entitled Cousin Thinks His Daughter Needs to Play with My Collector Doll. EC equals Entitled Cousin. LE equals Limited Edition. He 
CC and I are close, and I love him dearly, but he spoils his daughter rotten and lets her do whatever she wants ever since he got divorced. As a result, she's kind of a brat. I collect Disney store dolls, and every time they come over, his daughter sneaks into my room and plays with my dolls. I didn't want to say anything, but she plays roughly with dolls and has messed up their hair on a few and broken a leg off of one. So I bought some other dolls and gave them for her to play with, so she didn't grab any of mine. Recently, I bought a limited edition doll. They are expensive and a collector's item. I placed the Ellie doll high up on the shelf and always closed the door to where I stored the dolls because it was common for EC and his daughter to come over with no notice. Yesterday, EC and his kid came over and daughter went straight to where I stored my dolls. She saw the limited edition doll and wanted to play with it, attempting to climb the shelf. So I said, oh no, hun, don't do that. You'll get yourself hurt. Daughter goes, but I want to play with that doll, points to limited edition doll. Oh, sorry, dear, but you can't play with that doll. It's very expensive and she isn't meant to be played with. Are you serious? It's a doll. It's a kid's plaything. Look, it's fine if she plays with the other dolls. I don't care, but she can't play with that one. It's an LE doll and it's a collector's item. Daddy, I want that doll. At this point, she was about to throw a tantrum. I'm sorry, but hey, why don't you play with the other dolls I gave you? They're much better than that doll. No, it isn't. I want it now. Ugh, always with your toys, cuz. Let her play with it. She's not going to mess it up. Now getting angry. You see, she can play with any other doll except that one. Please respect that. Daughter began throwing a temper tantrum at this point because I was the only other person besides her mom to utter the awful, horrid, disgraceful word of no. I'll get it myself then. All my daughter wants is to play with a toy. I tried to stop EC, but once he put his weight on the shelf, it fell. A mess of dolls was on the floor. At this point, I was upset. I grabbed the LE doll before his daughter could and told them to leave. EC just rolled his eyes at me, said I was immature and left, slamming the door. My aunt, mom of EC, came over to help me pick and set everything up again. She apologized for her son's behavior. I told her it wasn't her fault, and I took her to a nice restaurant as thanks. Over dinner, she told me that this wasn't the first time E.C. had done this. His daughter broke a vase which was important to my grandfather, and E.C. blamed grandfather for not putting it somewhere safe just a week ago. I haven't heard from E.C. since the incident, and I honestly hope I don't for a while. Edit. Thank you all so much for your feedback and support. Unfortunately, while I was inspecting all my dolls, some of them were damaged. Not to mention the shelf wasn't sturdy either. The weight and fall affected it. I sent EC links to all of the dolls he and his daughter damaged, plus a new shelf, and explained to him that he is going to replace all the things he has damaged. I haven't gotten a reply yet, but I will update if I do. Update. On mobile, apologies for formatting. The situation has been rather messy, to say the least. First off, I wanted to thank you all for your support and advice. It was greatly appreciated. Some of you suggested I tell him to pay for the dolls his daughter damaged, and I did so. Hey, EC, your daughter and you damaged some of my dolls and even my shelf. I'm going to need you to pay for the damaged items. I sent him links here. Disney store dolls are not cheap, especially the Prince dolls, which are hard to come by, and those were among the ones he damaged. EC replied, Are you kidding? I don't have that kind of money for your little doll collection. This wouldn't have happened in the first place if you just let my daughter play with one of your dolls among the dozens you have. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't raise your daughter to be so entitled. I get divorce is hard for any kid, but giving everything she wants isn't helping. Try therapy. You think you can tell me how to raise my kid? Go ahead and F yourself. Don't tell me how to parent, and I'm not paying for your stupid effing toys. My response to this EC, I will take this to small claims court if I have to. Pay what you damaged, it's easier. And sorry to break it to you, but I think if I need to tell you what to do to raise your kid, your daughter has become a problem for the family. I was boiling angry at this point, and EC didn't reply for a while. Then I heard a knock at my door. I checked the peephole, and I saw a very upset EC. He was pounding on the door and said if I had a problem with his little girl, I need to say it to his face. He then began to try open the door and screamed obscenities at me. I got scared at this point, but luckily my older brother, who I lived with, pulled into the driveway. And with the threat of calling the police and a baseball bat, EC left. I told EC's mom, my aunt, about this, and she wanted to set up an intervention. She didn't want her son acting like this and didn't raise him to be so violent and an entitled parent, she told me. Anyway, 
Yesterday, my aunt, my older brother, and EC's ex-wife invited him to my aunt's home to settle this. Shortened story of the showdown that went down. Aunt started by saying she expected better of him, and his ex-wife said that giving their daughter everything she wants is not healthy. She was going to have some serious issues with men growing up if a lot of women in her life said no, and her dad said yes. A screaming match between EC and his ex-wife ensued after he said that, but his aunt managed to calm them down. I told EC all I wanted was for him to pay the damage he's done, or I take it to court. After a lot of convincing from my aunt, he did replace all the dolls and the shelf he damaged. I've had enough of EC's BS at this point, and I got what I needed, so my brother and I left. His ex-wife told me that it was all just a big argument from there and that she wanted to try to get custody of the daughter after I told her that he tried to get into my house. She said that he was prone to violent outbursts, but didn't have any evidence when the divorce came. Lucky for her, I have outdoor cameras as I do order expensive dolls and porch pirates are common where we live. And I have footage of EC trying to get into my house. I gave her the footage and if I needed to testify in court, I would. I've decided I don't want a relationship with EC anymore, especially after all this. For now, I'm just setting up my new shelf. I kind of feel bad for the aunt in this story. So it does make one wonder if she's got a history of cleaning up his messes and paying for the replacement dolls and shelf is where she drew the line. Who knows if she was enabling this behavior in past. Either way, OP definitely made the right call. Family or not, EC and his daughter were totally disrespectful. Let's head to the comments where we'll find a fun role doll reference. Adarb said, EC sounds like a real sweetheart. Can't imagine why his wife would divorce him. Mom of everyone five said, right? Just a real steady and level-headed dude. Colossal Error added, he's going to frame this whole thing as a poor single father being persecuted by his crazy ex and a cousin who looks down on him for being a poor single father. Angra said, don't F with collectors. My collections aren't even worth much. N64 and Game Boy games, 90 Star Wars figures in box, any cool baseball stuff I find at antique stores for under 15 bucks. But if someone broke something or removed it from its box, they wouldn't be welcome back in my house. Toast added, for real. I'm really protective of all my stuff since I grew up with crappy siblings, but if someone touched some of my figures, I'd be really upset. They aren't that expensive. One is at most $160. But I can't just go buy it again. They don't make it anymore. In response to daughter, Daddy, I want that doll. At this point, she was about to throw a tantrum. No. It isn't. I want it now. Garlic, not today, Satan said. Is the daughter literally Veruca Salt? Mail order bride said, When the shelf fell, all these orange dolls with green hair appeared out of nowhere and started singing a song about Miss Ginny Gimme Gimme. I hadn't bought any dolls that look even remotely like them. And EC's daughter's name is Mildred. I saved the big one for last this time. Story 3 takes Entitled to the next level and has gotten a couple smaller updates at the end. The story is, an entitled mother rips open the doors on my ambulance, and it does not end well for her. So this just happened last night, and I still can't believe someone would do this. I'm a 30-year-old male and a paramedic. I've been in EMS for the past eight years, and I absolutely love my job. Last night, we were dispatched to a 75-year-old female who fell at home. The patient stated that she tripped over her carpet and hit her head when she fell. We arrived on the scene and noticed that the home was a duplex. Our patient's door was on the right and her neighbor's door on the left. We made our way into the home and found her lying on the floor. The woman was awake and breathing. We started asking her the standard questions. Are you okay? Does anything hurt? Do you remember the fall? Etc. She stated that she has a pounding headache and that she remembers walking to bed and then waking up on the floor. In my field, that's a pretty big red flag. We notice that she's got a pretty good lump on the side of her head and a big bruise starting to form already. Noticing the bruise, I asked her if she was on any blood thinners. She said that she was on blood thinners for a previous stroke she had a few years ago. We urged her to let us take her to the hospital because there was a possibility that the fall could have caused a bleed in her brain and she should go to the hospital to get some scans done. She agrees and we begin to package her up. We applied a C-collar around her neck in case of any C-spine neck injuries. She denied any neck or back pain, so we lifted her up and placed her on our stair chair. A stair chair is exactly what it sounds like. It's a chair with tracks that we use to carry patients up and down stairs. As we were getting her out of the house, 
her neighbor whipped the door open and started yelling about how she couldn't sleep with all the lights and noises outside. The sound of the stair chair apparently woke her up, and she was not happy about that. My lieutenant walked over to her and apologized and said that we were dealing with a medical emergency and that we would be leaving soon enough. The Karen neighbor then noticed that our patient was her neighbor, and that's when she started yelling about something totally different. The entitled neighbor started yelling, You can't take her to the hospital. I have errands to run tomorrow and she needs to watch my kids. My lieutenant again reiterated that we were here for a medical emergency and that her health is more important than her errands. The entitled neighbor let out a loud huff and then slammed the door in his face. We thought that was the end of it. We were wrong. After a few minutes in the back of the ambulance, we told our lieutenant that he could take the engine crew back to the station and that we were going to be heading out in a few minutes. After we checked her vitals, got an IV going, and started giving her IV fluids, my partner got out of the back and went up to the driver's seat. About five seconds later, the back doors of my ambulance fly open, and who do I see? The entitled neighbor, of course. Apparently, she needed a few minutes to get dressed before coming outside. I yell at her, what the heck do you think you're doing? She yells back, I told you that she can't go to the hospital because she has to watch my kids tomorrow. She then starts trying to pull the cot out of the ambulance with our patient on it. Luckily, she didn't know how to unlatch the cot and couldn't get her out. Our patient says, I can't watch your kids tomorrow because I fell and I might be having a stroke. The entitled neighbor yells back at her and says, you're fine. You don't need to go to the hospital because you're not having a stroke. My partner then hears the commotion and goes to the back of the ambulance. He pulls her off the cot and I slam and lock the doors. You could tell that the entitled neighbor was about to become combative. It's important to know that either the police department or the sheriff's department responds to our calls too, when it's at night. Because of where we were, it took a few minutes for the sheriff's department to show up on scene, but he got there just in time. I couldn't hear much through the door, but I saw the officer get out of his cruiser with his taser drawn. My partner runs back up to the driver's seat and starts heading to the hospital. The last thing I saw through the back windows was the entitled neighbor stomping towards the officer and then her hitting the ground after being tased. Super satisfying to watch. I was talking with my patient and asked what that was all about. And she said that the entitled neighbor will just drop her three young kids off at her house and leave for several hours at a time with no notice. My patient has no idea that she was supposed to watch the kids at all because again, the entitled neighbor never even gives her a heads up about these things. Like I said in the beginning, this happened last night, so I don't have any updates, but I'll post an update when I learn more. Small update. My contact at the hospital said that the patient does not have a bleed. She does, however, have a really nasty looking bruise on her face from the blood thinners. It's incredibly common. She will most likely be going home soon. There is no update on the neighbor. I probably will not hear anything back until my next shift day. Update. Hey everyone, sorry for the late update. Unfortunately, it's not as exciting as some of you would hope for. So I got in touch with the officer on that call, and he said that the woman was not formally charged with anything. The patient is back home now and resting comfortably. Like I said before, the hospital found no signs of a bleed and she was discharged the next day. She was advised to file for an order of protection from the neighbor, but I don't believe I will ever be privy to that information, unless something happens again. I read a majority of the comments and most people are saying to contact elder abuse and DCFS. The only problem with filing those reports is having concrete proof. We never actually saw any children, so we can't really say that they are abused or neglected at all. We can say that we have a suspicion, but for all we know, they could be living their best lives at home with the entitled parent. If the entitled parent had left and abandoned her kids, then that's another story. Calling DCFS without any signs of child abuse and just working off hearsay can just cause more problems if the accusations are unfounded. The same can pretty much be applied about the elder abuse. We have no actual proof of elder abuse occurring. The entitled neighbor was not involved in the actual fall, and there was no suspicion for any kind of financial, physical, emotional, or social abuse. The way our patient talked about the kids getting dumped on her was in more of an inconsiderate way, and not in an abusive way. Long story short, the entitled neighbor was just kind of a butthole, I am, however, hoping that the patient press charges for assault, but I don't know if she will. If I hear anything more, I'll post another update. I can't even with this. It's so appalling. Next, level entitlement. Without fail, every time I read one of these Karen stories where she puts her wants above someone else's health, it really irks me. It's just so gross. 
Anywho, let's check out the top comments. Scream Chi said, Wow, the poor lady. She is hardcore getting taken advantage of. My parents are that age, and I don't even let them watch my one child without me present because I don't want anything to happen, and I don't want to wear them out. This poor lady needs to get the F away from the crazy neighbor. That's abuse. Agent of Midgard said, No, the crazy neighbor has to get the F away from everyone. Even her kids shouldn't be near her. HMS Slardabarka said, Is the neighbor going on your call the police list? EMT I used to know told me about this. His company keeps a list of all locations that require police notification because the company doesn't want their crews exposed to the locals. This could be because the neighbors are like this one or because there is a drug house in the area and they want to make sure their rig isn't stolen or broken into. Patrick R's ghost said, there's at least one person with a serious brain injury and it wasn't your patient. KJ Parker added, it's hard to get enough oxygen when you've got your head that far up your butt. Equal Bus said, her head is so far up her rear end, she can see what she had for lunch. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now. Da, da, da.